Towerborn is launching into early access this week, but we got to play it earlier. Ahoy folks, Krago here for Pure Xbox to bring you what we think of Stoic's action RPG, Towerborn. This preview was written by Liam Doolin, so let's dive in. Microsoft's release schedule for 2024 might no longer include a certain action role-playing game, and yeah, we're looking at you avowed, but thankfully there are other titles under the same genre to fill the void. One of these happens to be the beat-em-up style game, Towerborn. Although, admittedly, the release model here is slightly different to your average Xbox Game Studios launch. Not only is it limited to just PC for now, but it's also exclusively launching in early access on Steam. This rollout is to allow the community to be a part of the building process, according to developer Stoic. So, for this preview, we've obviously been playing the game on PC. Fortunately, we've been able to plug in an Xbox controller, so when it does eventually show up on Xbox Series X and S in 2025, we should have no problem jumping back in. Right, with all of this in mind, Towerborn is a brand new IP from the talented development team at Stoic an Austin, Texas-based studio who previously worked on beautiful, crafted, tactical role-playing series, The Banner Saga. Its new game, Towerborn, was originally a surprise announcement during the Xbox Game Showcase in 2023, and up until recent months, it hasn't really been in the spotlight like Xbox's other upcoming releases. This preview has given us the best opportunity yet to learn more about the new title, and to answer the question, how does Towerborn hold up? As the player, you're immediately thrown into a world filled with chaos and turmoil, where humanity has been overrun by monsters. Fortunately, there's one last bastion known as the Belfry, a huge tower-like structure where special individuals known as Ace, born anew from the spirit realm with special skills, grit, and determination, unite to defend and reclaim the land. After a brief intro cinematic, you're presented with a lovely art style which looks something straight out of a vintage Disney production, and there's a soundtrack that perfectly matches the mood of each scene playing out on screen. During our time with the preview of Towerborn, we were given the chance to familiarize ourselves with the Belfry, which acts as a hub zone, where you, the hero, can equip new gear, level items, hand in missions, take on new assignments, or simply take a break and hang out with your fellow adventurers. The majority of action unfolds on the world map, and whilst it felt like we only scratched the surface during our time with the pre-early access hands-on, the general gameplay loop requires players to brawl through a side-scrolling level, taking down waves of enemies, either solo or in a party, level up, unlock new gear, and then rinse and repeat this process on a new tile on the overworld. Thrown into the mix is all sorts of customization and randomization to keep things feeling fresh, along with a variety of mobs and bosses. As for your hero, you're not actually locked into one class. We had access to four different classes made up of a brawler, a sentinel equipped with a sword and shield, a pyro-like club class, and a ninja-inspired character wielding dual blades. You can swap between and level these individual classes each run, and early on there's a mission which requires you to try them all out, which might even make you reconsider your main. Each character also comes equipped with their own special moveset, with attacks to mow down mobs, break an enemy's guard, and even some aerial maneuvers. Certain attacks like sword spins are also handy at crowd control when you're surrounded. The Xbox controls do a good job managing all of the action. In addition to your character's abilities, you also have special companions known as Umbra, which can be swapped in and out of battle, granting your ace all sorts of powerful attacks. Combined, all the leveling, gear unlocks, and progression creates a compelling cycle, as long as you don't mind the typical action RPG grind, with item drops broken up into different tiers, like uncommon and rare. If you played a game like Diablo before, you should know what you're signing up for in this respect. The battles in each stage will naturally become more difficult as you progress, and there are harder difficulties which can be unlocked through special trials. 
we found additional party members aka other players gave us the edge in battle and also speed each run up with the ability to team up against monsters and generally just coordinate attacks to give you the upper hand against bosses or harder challenges higher level players can also effectively carry lower level ones resulting in some big xp boosts and less of a grind about the only major issues we did encounter during cooperative play were regular disconnects, but this was a pre-early access launch. One other thing worth mentioning is the DLC in the form of a Founders Pack, which unlocks some extra goodies for early signups. How much DLC and its free-to-play model could impact the game in the future is obviously unclear at this stage. However, Stoic has reiterated in an interview earlier this year how Towerborn has been designed to include highly modifiable systems to respond to player feedback on the fly. So if there are any major concerns raised during this early access period, there's a possibility mechanics and certain aspects of the gameplay could potentially be overhauled. One other aspect we're yet to really see is the evolving narrative, which will apparently lead to episodic content. We already know developer Stoic was able to deliver a quality product given its history with the Banner Saga trilogy, and Towerborn is shaping up to be just as promising with its fun and addictive action RPG formula, colourful artwork and friendly multiplayer design. We can't wait to jump back in when Early Access goes live on Steam this week. Now, before I wrap up here, I have a very important question for you. Are you a fan of Microsoft's strategy with Towerborn, having it launch on Steam despite Xbox having a PC app of its own, and delaying the console version until 2025? Will you still care about Towerborn in 2025? I'd love to see you sound off in the comments below, but all that's left to say is bye-bye for now. Cheerio!